Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the New Age Hipster Radio Podcast. Today I am so excited to share with you our special guest, Diana Cooper. Hi Diana, welcome. Hello, lovely to see you. I'm so, so excited. As soon as I pressed record, I was like, oh my gosh, this is it. This is such an exciting one. Uh, so for those of you who don't know Diana Cooper, I don't know where you've been. I think, I think most people who are uh, a part of this community who are drawn to my work probably know who Diana Cooper is, but just in, just in case, um, Diana Cooper received an angelic visitation that transformed her life many years ago. She is now the best-selling author of 34 books which is amazing, um, which have been published in 28 languages. Diana specializes in spiritual subjects, including angels, unicorns, dragons, and Atlantis. She teaches internationally, is the founder of the Diana Cooper School of White Light, and she's also the author of the new book, The Golden Future. So welcome, Diana. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Oh, it's lovely to be here. And thank you for holding my new book, The Golden Future, up. You know, so many people say to me, oh, I don't know Paul, what a life it's going to be for our children and grandchildren. And I say, no, everything is shifting. We have a golden future because this period, 2012 to 2032, is the most important there's ever been in the history of the planet. So 2012 marked the end of an unbelievable 260,000-year cosmic era, the era of Atlantis. That ended then, and we have to do, Earth has to do a double-dimensional shift into 2032. So we were behindhand, so we've had all this help to try and push us forward very quickly into 2032. Now, we're heading for something amazing, but the analogy is this. Have you ever had a new kitchen made in your house, Vicky? Uh, no. <laughs> no, I haven't. Not I, haven't have. <laughs> I, yeah, I can imagine what that's like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, loads of people have, and they they know that this new kitchen is coming, but everything's being knocked out. It's it, it's a complete chaos and mess as the old is removed so that the new can be installed. And there's a point where you think, oh, why am I going through this? But you hold on to the new kitchen that you're getting. Now, we are in exactly the same position, except that we are actually having an expansion. So we're having to knock walls down as well to get a completely new, much bigger kitchen in. But the same principle applies. We hold on to the vision of the golden future when extraordinary new things are happening. In 2032, there's a new bl blueprint activated for this entire universe. And we are part of this. And so we are moving towards a time when the old education system is going. We will have an education system which is for the children, not for the egos of the adults and politicians, but actually what the children need. And of course, the new children coming in are very different. They're already starting to be born with their 12 strands of DNA intact, but they can't be activated because the frequency is too low. But this is changing. And all of us are now starting to integrate the 12 strands of DNA again. Now, in the golden era of Atlantis, which was legendary, when people had awesome gifts and talents, that was because their 12 strands of DNA were fully intact and activated. But at the end of Atlantis, they were withdrawn and we were left as we are now in that third dimensional state without any gifts and talents and connections. As these are being restored, everything is changing for us because our gifts and talents will totally be restored. That means people will be clairvoyant for a start. Now this means that you can see or sense everybody's auras. 
Now, if you can see everybody's auras, why would anyone be dishonest? Because you can see, you absolutely know. So everybody is honest and truthful. You can leave your doors open again. You can, everything will be done for the people, by the people. It will be a totally different scenario. People will take responsibility for their health. And there will be a purification of the planet again. So this means we'll have good food again, fresh air to breathe, pure water. And so we will not need the old allopathic medicine that's on its way out. We will just be able to self-heal and maintain good health. And this is a totally new scenario again. We're already moving towards it. There are lots of community health hubs being started and life is already changing. Travel, of course, will be totally different. In the fifth dimension that we are aiming towards, at that point, you absolutely know that your needs will be met. When your needs are met, you know that if you need a car, a vehicle will be waiting for you outside your front door. If you want food, it will appear for you. It's very hard for us in our current state to really, really understand this. But as we move more into the fifth dimension, then this is starting to happen automatically. And people are saying, you know, I just thought about that and a nice holiday in somewhere and somebody suggested it to me and we're off. You, you've obviously noticed this already. This is beginning to happen. It's trickling in. But of course, if your needs are met, you don't need to own a car, for example. Because why would you have a car when there's one available to you immediately? Mm. Why would you own your house when the perfect house with the perfect conditions is there for you? So the whole thinking is different. People are friendlier. People are living with their soul families because we are moving to a point of heart openness, which is totally different. There are some awesome things happening. And I have an event. It's live in Portugal, but that's fully booked up. But we're live streaming it everywhere. This is on the 22nd of October because my guidance is that this is as important as the cosmic moment of 2012. I'm going to say that again because it's so awesome. This event in October is as important as the cosmic moment of 2012. It's just amazing. What we're going to do is ultimately in the afternoon event, we are going to merge with our monads. Now your monad is your I am presence, your original divine spark from God, your 12th dimensional aspect, the highest aspect of you that you can, that you have. And this is what many, many people think of as God. It is so much beyond our comprehension and this has never been possible before. But we are throughout the day raising the energy by raising the frequency of the third eye. And the point of this is for peace. The third eye chakra of the, the world is Afghanistan. And that reflects the third eye chakras of humanity. It is currently going to be the last place at peace on the planet. So when everybody raises the frequency of their third eye, that starts to bring Afghanistan into peace. We have a mighty soul coming to stand on the platform who is a high priest in Af Afghanistan, I was going to say, in Jupiter. And that's Andrew James Roberts. And he is going to anchor the portal from Jupiter into Earth. 
and we are all going to assist with this. And this is going to bring about abundance consciousness on earth and more peace on earth. And we're going to, for the first time, have those incredible energies pouring into our planet. Then Adrian Lee is going to clear our Akashic records. Now, he also is a mighty man. He's a high priest in Andromeda and in Venus. And a high he was a high priest of the healing temples of Atlantis in the absolute peak times of Atlantis. And so he is going to clear all of that. Then we are going to do the monadic merge. Now, the meditation takes up to an hour. I do it every single day. And I've been told I have to continue to do it every single day. I've done it for four months now. It's totally changed my life and my energies. It is awesome. And it has constantly evolved. It's been absolutely amazing. Five masters come in first and they will stay with you throughout your soul journey if you ask them to. These are Saint Germain, Merlin. Now he's giving you the power of magic with the wisdom to use it for the highest good. Saint Germain is giving you particular gold and violet energy to bring you into harmony and balance. Paul the Venetian is giving you the flame of freedom then you're free to stand in your mastery. Lord Vuslu was the highest frequency, high priest of Atlantis. And he came in to jump shift Atlantis. He carried all the keys and codes that enabled Atlantis to jump shift into the legendary golden era. And he is coming in to place his flame in our hearts to enable us to have the keys and codes to jump shift us into the golden era coming and most extraordinary of all El Moira he is the Manu of the new age he is awesome he is carrying the keys and codes of the fifth dimensional human of the new age with 12 strands of DNA intact and if you give him permission he will step energetically into your body and transfer the keys and codes you're ready for into you. But that is just the beginning. Then we create an archangel ball around us of 12 archangels. Each of those archangels gives us upper fifth dimension or awakens is the word that they like to use, awakens within us particular qualities at an upper fifth dimensional frequency and this prepares us for the monadic merge but that archangel ball if we continue to call those archangels in they will create a permanent ball in our energy field so they will permanently be there for us when we have done that we then open up and unlock the keys and codes, light codes, in the, the chakras of the universe. So the planetary chakras, these are um, the moon, Sirius, um, Venus, uh, all, all those chakras. They are then, we unlock those codes with love. That is the key. We're unlocking the 12 and we're bringing down rays of light containing those codes. And they too are lighting up different energies, awakening them within us. During this, we are also going out to three of the much higher areas of the cosmos. We're going to Helios, which contains the divine masculine energy but it contains the energies of all you can be it is awesome and we are bringing that energy down and it's being anchored into the planet by tim wilde who is an awesome being high priest of our arcturus high priest of our orion 
high priest in Atlantis. He's a member of the Council of Earth. And he's on one of the 88 who works with the Intergalactic Council. He's awesome. And he, as soon as I told him about this, he said, oh, that's what the Intergalactic Council has been preparing me for all year. Of course I'll be there. So he's anchoring that 11th dimensional energy from Helios for humanity into the planet for the first time ever. Now, 2,000 years ago, Jesus came to Earth to access and anchor the seventh dimensional Christ light. Now the energy of the planet has gone up. This time we are being asked to go up collectively and access the 11th dimensional energy from Helios, Andromeda and Lyra. And we are bringing those energies down and they are each being anchored into the planet by different beings. So Adrian Lee is anchoring the energy of Andromeda for the first time ever. That's the higher heart of the universe. He's anchoring it at an 11th dimensional frequency into the planet, right into the center. We do our part by supporting him, visualizing it, seeing it coming in and being anchored. And then Mia Kafkios is, we are bringing in the 11th dimensional codes from Lyra. Now, behind the stargate of Lyra is the pure white unicorn energy. And I like to see that as an ocean of energy. And when the droplets come out, they take the form of unicorns. Very high, high, beautiful, high frequency beings of absolute heart and wisdom and everything else. So that those droplets are now going to be able to come in much more as unicorns. It means your personal unicorn will be able to connect you much more, hold your frequency high. And Mia Kafkios, who is a high priestess of Andromeda. She was a high priestess in the Temple of Truth in Atlantis in the top of the golden era. She currently is serving on the councils of Earth and Saturn. And these people have amazing roles in the universe. They are all going to be on the platform. Anchoring this awesome energy deeply into the planet. So this is all part of the preparation before we merge with our monad. But then we, we have light coming in from all these high frequency cosmic planes. And we are absorbing that light at an incredibly high frequency. And of course, this is being allowed by our guides and angels who are supporting us able to take this energy in. And then we're passing it into the planet. Now, Earth, in its, in its greatest energy, holds golden keys of wisdom. That has always been its strength. So that's its energy. And what we're going to do is bring in all the codes from the stars and planets and let them flow around Earth. When they merge with the gold of Earth, they Earth will then hold golden white. Now that's wisdom with power. And so Earth will then hold a perfect balance of wisdom and power and we will initiate it and enable this to happen earth to raise her frequency and radiate that golden white energy out into the universe this will enable earth to take her rightful place in the universe when we have done that piece of service work we will bring the energy up through us and then bringing in our, our cosmic aura so that we are just with our five masters and our archangels. 
we will then find our frequency rising. Our monad is 12th dimensional. It will come down then to meet us at the level we have reached and we will merge with our monad. Now, for the last four months, as I say, I've done this every day and it's been an extraordinary journey for me because it has changed and developed. The very first few times I felt my monad coming down, I literally had to knock and ask for entry. And then one day the door opened and I entered. And then beings came to talk to me while I was there. And then different things happened. And then I just started to merge with my monad. Now, this is so that everybody can do it. The various teachers of the Diana Cooper School are also doing this every day. And this is changing the energy so we can all go up and just merge with our monad on the 22nd of October at this event. So having merged with our monad and received the energies of our monad, and I have to tell you, my entire body goes into a, a, a beautiful, beautiful state. It's like tingling. It's awesome every day and it gets stronger. It doesn't just get, oh, this is boring. It just gets amazing. And here is the another extraordinary thing. All our monads are then going into the center of the universe and merging. When this happens, we will illuminate the entire universe. It's that important. At that point, and I've only just been given this information, but at that point, everybody will touch the 12th dimension for the first time ever in the entire history of the planet. Now, being a practical sort of person, I asked, well, what happens if a person's asleep? And they said, if somebody is asleep, they will miss the opportunity. But if they've been taken out of their body by their guide and they themselves will know the difference, then they will make they will make the twelfth dimensional <laughs> awesome, awesome connection. And so I thought, wow. After this, on our journey, we are going, you know, as you probably know, you cannot, anyone who's ever incarnated on earth cannot travel in the universe alone. They have to have an angel with them. So still in our angelic aura, our angelic orb, we will travel together to the intergalactic council. They will be expecting us. I go there every day with a petition for humanity and the universe. And uh, the 12 members will be waiting there. We will petition for three things. The, this is what I've been given, the first two anyway. The first one is for leaders with strength and integrity and vision to step forward now to lead the world. These have been being prepared, as I'm sure you know, for a long time. The second one is really, really important, and that is for pure air, pure water, and pure soil to be returned for humanity in the best way possible and as soon as possible. People then have the chance to make individual petitions if they wish to. But here is something really, really exciting. I was talking to Serapis Bay and about his pure white flame of Atlantis. The pure white flame of Atlantis is the most powerful way of dissolving lower frequencies. And there are some very deep, dense lower frequencies within the planet, which is why we've had all these fires and things. Much of that has come from the end of Lemuria and the end of Atlantis. 
and that's being cleared. And But there's still quite a lot of that left on the planet and all the stuff on the surface. And that, the best way of clearing that, the most, um, I found it just absolutely extraordinary for clearing dark energy is Serapis Bay Pure White Flame of Atlantis. And so I asked him if he would put it around the entire planet. And he said, oh, he said, I'd have to, um, I can't do that on my own. I would have to get permission. You would have to, because that will affect not just the planet, that will affect the universe. So he said, you'd have to ask the Intergalactic Council for that permission. So next day in my meditation, I went to the Intergalactic Council and I asked for this permission and they said, oh, well, this is too important to take an instant decision. We would have to consult and um, come back tomorrow. So it, it was actually amazing because I went back and they unanimously gave the permission. But I then became aware of six billion, six, so it started with six million, six million souls from around the universe supporting this. And this wasn't people from Earth. This was people from all over the universe, souls from all over the universe. And I thought, that's interesting. Next day, there were 20 million. Now there are billions. This is literally being supported by billions of souls around the universe who are energetically supporting Earth, making this shift on the 22nd of October. So when Serapis Bay has received his permission from the Intergalactic Council, you know how time at those high frequencies all becomes one. So the permission is already granted for the 22nd of October. And so we are then going to return to Earth and all ask him together to do this and support him by visualizing that energy happening. It's going to clear massive numbers of stuck souls from around Earth. And that's going to massively impact on what happens here and how people feel. And so that's the main point of the day, that we actually raise the frequency of the entire planet and enables peace to come forward. It's um, it's quite, quite extraordinary. I can talk on, Rex, but you might like to ask a question or or say something. Ah, oh, it sounds incredible. Being live streamed around the world, mm -hmm. I'm trying to get as many languages as possible. I'm saying just take the live stream for free and use you know and share it with people or people can join an affiliate program and then they they can take 50 percent of whatever they make it it's just it's all about trying to get it out i'm telling people get a group together take the live stream get a group together and do it all together yeah also sounds... another thing they sorry one more thing <laughs> they said that if people do the meditations within 21 days of it going out live, that will be added, Archangel Metatron will add that energy to the planetary boost. After 21 days for their own personal spiritual growth. But before that, they can do it up to that time and it will add to the whole planetary shift. So I thought, wow, that's just amazing. Yeah, yeah, it sounds absolutely incredible. And I, I suppose my question uh, being in Australia is always time. if you, the time, <laughs> the time. And if we join well, and we watch later, does it still, does it still yeah. work the same? That's why I asked that specific question because I've got people translating into Taiwanese and Chinese and you know, Vietnamese and all sorts of things. And they, they've said, yes, as long as they listen within 21 days and do the meditation, 
because there are the three in the day. But as long as they do the monadic merge, that's the most important one. The others are preparation. And of course, they all help and they all help everybody. Then it will it will have a total, total resonance and effect on them. Amazing. Amazing. I yeah. No, no, I just I just think it's so exciting. Just listening to you speak about it, I already feel like my energy is <laughs> from when we started the the call, just listening to you share about the the experience and and you connecting with the with the beings and the the things that have been coming through for you i'm like i'm feeling lots of things already happening <laughs> in my in my but field and I'm, I'm feeling the yeah. you know the presence of these beings and yeah i feel like it's already it's already happening which is really really amazing i think there's already being a shift because as you know You've only got to talk about it. My energy is going to be impacting on you. And then all the beings that I'm talking about will start to connect with you. Mm. And people are feeling it. This is the difference this time. I think it's mm. so powerful and so important that people really, really can sense it coming into them already. Yeah, and I think it's so. it's such a... Um, obviously the event is going to be incredible, but even just having these conversations about preparing for this next, you know, this next chapter, it's just feels so um, important to me because I know that so many of us are feeling a bit hopeless. <laughs> we look at the state of the world and we think, you know, what's going to happen? And then, um, you know, your your book speaks about, all these shifts that are going to happen in 2032 and people are like really though <laughs> because that seems really soon but just having these reminders that you know we have to keep the keep the vision we have to hold the vision for this for the golden future yeah. and not buy into the idea that everything's going to be terrible <laughs> moving forward and you know it's really strange before COVID, I was thinking, my goodness, I've been talking about these things for years. I can't see it happening. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, we had lockdown. Mm -hmm. And wow, amazingly, I could see everything I'd been talking about just starting to take place. And uh, I thought, yes, we have to stop international trade as it is. It's not viable any longer. We have to stop so many things. And it's all beginning to happen. And of course, a lot of people who are stuck in the old way are fighting it. And um, that's causing problems for them in their lives. But if you're prepared to let go and flow, then it will be so much easier. You know, people who are very happy to... <sighs> to walk in nature, to um, to love the waters, to play games uh, and not want the bigger house, the bigger car, they're going to find the transition quite easy. Mm -hmm. But if you want designer clothes, the best car in the road, the top job, that's going to be much more difficult because pyramid jobs and that old structure is out. That's not the future. The future is everyone working together. Now, if you have a meeting, instead of one person being the boss, you meet together, you link heart to heart, you state what you've come to discuss, and then you all are there for the highest outcome for everybody. The highest good of all is the new way of doing things. And then a decision is easily and quickly made because you all have the same vision of whatever's for the highest good. You won't need planning permission then. All of these laws that we are imposed upon us, all gone. Money as we know it, disappearing. It's The whole structure is going to be so very, very different. You know, you, you don't go to a hospital to have something taken out of you. You've, you've decided, you've taken responsibility for what you eat, for what you say, for every single thing that happens to you. If you feel out of balance, you go to a local healing center, local, somewhere you can just walk to, and they will rebalance you. And so that you are back to peak health very quickly. 
at the moment, and it's one of the things that we'll be doing in the third eye meditation, Archangel Raphael is starting to awaken and to activate the fifth dimensional health blueprint in people. When you have this, you can self-heal, you can look after yourself. It's just a very different way of being. Mm, mm, that sounds good. <laughs> Yeah, sounds, no, sounds no, it very, really very good. does make a difference. <laughs> so many people, I mean, we've had to have allopathic medicine. It's been needed because there's been so much karma because this was end times. So people no longer could say, oh, I'm not going to take on my great grandfather's karma, pass it down the line. Couldn't do that anymore. We've all had to take on all of the karma. And this has caused so many imbalances in the physical that we've uh, had to have the allopathic stuff but now that's ending we've taken it all on everybody who's incarnated now has been a, a real real trojan and and worked for humanity and actually ultimately the universe because mm -hmm. earth has to move up so that the whole universe can move up mm, yeah it's it's funny to speak to to people who are on the spiritual path at this time and so many people kind of joke why did I come now <laughs> why did I, I sign up now <laughs> but Wait, you lucky my goodness <laughs> me yeah well the reason that there are so many people on the planet when I was born there were two billion now there are eight billion mm -hmm. on the planet Massive. And the reason for this is because Source gave a dispensation to anybody who'd got karma outstanding to come back if they wish to, to try to clear it before the end of this great cosmic era. And so all these people have come in to try and clear their karma. And now, as we've seen, you know, whole villages are leaving together because they've done what they've come to do. And so they're going. And so it, it's all working out amazingly. Mm. And of course, the population will drop again. Yeah, it's interesting well, too that, um, you know, in these times, like so many people are, um, are choosing not to have their own children as well. There seems to be a really big shift uh, of, of people my generation who are kind of choosing not to do that, which is really interesting. And a lot of people are like, no, I'm just going to do my spiritual work and look after animals. <laughs> it, not everybody comes in with the sole destiny of having children. It's always been the case. But now people are being able to make the choice much more readily as a much more consciously than they did before mm. i mean if you were meant to have a child that child will come in that soul very persistent will make sure it comes to you if that's what's really meant to happen mm. but isn't it interesting that people are recognizing that actually their destiny might be to teach other people's children look after animals as you say because that's very needed mm. we really are going to be treating animals very differently in the future and as a result, you know, we're not all we're not all eating meat and things. Those animals will no longer stay on the planet, and so we will be having very different sort of animals. A lot, a lot of the animals now that were designed for the third dimension no longer wish to remain. So they will move on, and new animals will come forward, and that are in, in tune with a new fifth dimensional age. So it's not, oh, we've done this terrible thing to these animals. It's, wow, that's happening. But at the same time, we have to take responsibility for what we have done. And that hasn't, hasn't been right towards animals at all. We have to shift that, and we will. Because as your heart opens, it opens to animals and trees and everything. And so we will no longer be able to treat them in that way. Yeah, I, I love what you what you say about animals. And I actually have your um, I love your animal deck. It's one of my favorite oracle oh, decks. Yeah. I just oh. the first time I saw it, I just 
I loved it. And I have oh, the, uh, the kangaroo from that um, neck has been sitting on my altar for a very long time as, um, as oh, one of my guides. Yeah. But yeah, I, oh, I love, my... yeah, I love that. I love that deck. And, you know, for anybody who's listening to this, if you're, if you feel a connection to animals, you must check out that deck because it's just, yeah, incredible. Yeah, and for even more information about the animals, there's my book, The Animal World. Yeah. And that it's actually very, very interesting when I was tuning in for the information for that because, of course, the animals all come from different stars just as we do. They all come in with the sole purpose just as we do. Uh, they're no different. And, you know, one of my little dogs was adopted and I was told that she came in with a broken heart. And then, of course, her first owners rejected her. Mm. And so she's never felt loved. And Gila came around the other day and was giving her healing. And she said, no, I'm trying, I'm giving her love for a broken heart. And because uh, I knew she had this, um, I'm giving her love for a broken heart, but she won't accept it. She's mm. frightened at the moment. So they are just the same as humans. It, it is actually astonishing. They love in the same way as humans do. Mm. And people say, oh, no, we anthropomorphize them, but we don't. They are very, very similar. Yes, yes. I feel I feel that way about my rescue cats who have traveled all over the world <laughs> with me uh, when I oh, left the awesome. when I left the UK. Um, me and my husband were really torn between what's the right thing to do. Do we rehome them or do we put them through the trauma of of taking them with us and putting them on a plane, but the guidance was so clear that they wanted to come with us. So yeah, we have sure. put them through that trauma, unfortunately, but, um, but yeah, it just no, felt like no. they that was just, wanted to yeah. come. <laughs> but then they've also had experiences and gone through them, mm. maybe an initiation for them. Mm. And as you know, an initiation, it's jolly tough, but you come out at a higher level. And that's so amazing. I see lots of people still having these big initiations, knowing that they're going to come out so much better, so much more spiritual. Life's just going to take a new pathway, as your cats did. Yes, yes, yeah. And I think it's uh, it's difficult at times, though, isn't it, when you're right in the middle of <laughs> of the flight or you're in the middle of the the uncertainty or the challenge to 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 stay in that energy do you have any tips for how we can do that when times are tough you know that's a very interesting thing I had cancer for the second time last year and that was the most amazing and wonderful experience for me because I knew it was an initiation mm. and I think that if you're going through a tough time say okay I am learning something here I am going through this test. As I go through this test calmly and in a relaxed way with all the um, support from spirit, I will come out at a much higher level and everything will change. Uh, for me personally, I just knew that. And I went into hospital just full of joy. And the nurses were thinking I was senile. It was really quite interesting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> can imagine <laughs> now dear why exactly do you think you're in hospital <laughs> and, uh, oh it was quite funny and uh, it, it just was for me a joyous experience and then my ex-son-in-law he came to stay and look after me for a few days and he said I can't believe it he said the whole house is just full of joy <laughs> I said yes because I'm going to come out of this at a higher frequency. I know it's tough. And I think that it's very often the uncertainty, will it ever change, that really upsets people. Mm. And people let go of their visions instead of saying, oh, my God, this is just a huge test. When, this, when I ho hold my vision and I come out of this, everything is going to unfold better they instead go into their own turbulence and doubts and concern and that blocks it and makes it all much worse 
Mm, yeah, it's very, um, it's such an amazing way to, to look at it. And I think for most of us, it's definitely somewhere to aim. <laughs> Even if we can't well, quite get there I, all the time just yet. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, yes, I suppose my two <laughs> cancer experiences were both very different. The first time the doctors kept saying, oh, I, I probably wasn't going to survive, you know, I'll get the family, all that sort of thing. Yeah. And so that happened twice. And twice in the night, I I was visited by the angels who said to me, do you want to stay or go? And each time I said, well, whatever's for the highest good, I don't mind. Mm -hmm. And I think that was the key to doing it because I didn't mind. Mm -hmm. I surrendered. And I just had masses and masses of support and assistance from spirit. And then, of course, my life changed afterwards. And doing lots of physical support as well. And that's what that does. But that's a very specific type of um, initiation. There are others where you lose your house, you're getting divorced. I mean, the first initiation, now really bad one, the initiation of the heart, that's always the worst one, was 40 years ago, or more than 40 years ago, when I had um when I got divorced. And I could not see a future. I just did not know what was going to happen. And that was when I literally sat in this chair and said, well, if there's anything out there, show me. And an angel came in. And when you're at rock bottom, there's only one way up, and that's, and that's up. And so that angel took me and showed me my destiny. And from that moment... I still resisted, I still thought, I still didn't totally believe all of those things, but that changed my life, put me on a new pathway. And out of it emerged the life I now have, which is awesome. But that has taken 40 years. Not everybody is prepared to, <laughs> to do it for 40 years. Yeah, I think that's um I think that's really comforting though. I know there's a lot of people who are in my community who are just kind of starting out on the path or have just, you know, they've picked up my my book Which Please is very much a kind of beginner's guide to to yeah. spirituality. So it's reassuring to know that we don't have to be <laughs> to be there yet. <laughs> there's time to work well, never there. Work it on we're never there when we're in a human body. Mm. But can get much much closer now to the first time ever we've been able to go into these much higher states this literally it's completely new for people on the planet and the energy that's coming in now to enable like the 22nd of october event when literally people will change their entire frequency and move into something completely new it is going to change everything and you know we're bringing in the raising the frequency of the third eye. What happens then is if you can bring your third eye into peace and a higher frequency, and we collectively then bring Afghanistan into peace and a higher frequency, and the whole world comes into peace. As soon as the world is at peace and people cooperate with each other, which is the vision, then the crystal skull of Atlantis, the amethyst skull, which is currently held etherically under the Sphinx, is releasing its light. What that is doing is waking up uh, all these crystals, they're all coming online, all the crystals around the world and starting to radiate the codes that have been put into them. When people have had ceremonies, when people have held them and put energy into them, all of that is going to start radiating out as great light. In the earth, there are seams of all the gems and they will come online too and they will radiate out archangel energy because of course an emerald is the concrete form of archangel Raphael's energy. A sapphire is a form of Michael's energy. Diamonds are Gabriel's energy. All of this is going to start radiating out. This is going to open a portal in China which holds pure white love energy. It's never been opened before, and this is now going to radiate very high frequency, pure white light. 
and that's going to start to open the higher halves of the masses. Then people are going to start seeing the world in a completely different way, and it's going to change everything. You know, the in 2032, the the hollow centers of all the planets are going to connect with love and communicate. And this, again, is going to send pure love energy around the planet, around the universe. And so the frequency is going to shift. As soon as we are all sending out that peace and love and light into the planet, then we receive awesome gifts from the universe. This is one reason why we're opening the portal from Jupiter, because Jupiter holds cosmic abundance as well as expansion energy and happiness and much more, as soon as that's open, then everybody but everybody is going to be full of peace and joy and love and light. And the universe responds to that energy. And we are going to receive rewards in the form of new technology and spiritual technology that will enable our lives to become so much easier. This is when we'll be having, um, and we're trying to bring forward the pure water again. The power will all be free and ecological. We'll be using the power of lightning, the power of oceans in ways we've never done before. Pyramid power, so many powers that we'll use and we'll learn how to put vast power into a tiny little battery and that is going to start changing everything mm. as well so clean air clean soil clean waters free ecological power internet connections not like now but on a much higher frequency purer so all the stuff the third dimensional stuff that's going out now people won't be interested in it mm. the people that are interested in that will go and move on to another planet they won't want to be here in the fifth dimensional frequency can you imagine a life where you are living in exactly the place where your soul feels most comfortable you are surrounded by your soul mates, people on a soul frequency with you. That is the recipe for real contentment. There will be much more time for leisure. You will only do jobs that fulfill you. And I think that's really important. People often ask, so what jobs will the universe support in the future? Because, of course, all these people that are working in these corrupt organizations, they're all earning karma, even though they're only you know, behind the counter. Mm. So that's, it's, not, it's not helpful to their spiritual progress. Everybody will be doing jobs that gives them a sense of joy and completeness and satisfaction. Creativity will be honored again. <laughs> teachers will be honored children will be respected the whole whole mentality is going to be heart based heart centered and totally utterly different and sad and just lovely mm. well, I, I find I'm... the thought of the communities of the golden future amazing mm. I'm I'm ready for it I'm I'm here yeah. for it. <laughs> it Why has, are you incarnated now? Well, yes, yes, obviously, <laughs> obviously. Um, it has been just so fantastic to speak with you today, Diana. You are so amazing, and I didn't say this at the beginning, but I like I have followed you for a long, long time, long before I was doing any spiritual work for anybody else. So it's really, um, it's really been such an honor to have you here today and to, to, to hear you speak. It's been just, I've enjoyed it. I feel like I'm on another level just from this last uh, 50, 50 minutes or so. Um, could you please let everybody know, how do we sign up 
how do we get involved? How can we join you for this incredible event that's happening? Okay, well, there's two things, aren't there? First, there's a new book, thank you, The Golden Future, um, which will make you feel brilliant. And then the event, go to my website. There's all sorts of information on the events page of my website, and you can see everything there, all that I've been talking about, how to sign up and get your link. Fantastic. And I will put the Do link. Join us. Do get, get a group of people together. Do it together and uh, and enjoy it and communicate about it. Mm, yeah. It sounds fantastic. I will put the link um, wherever you're listening you. to this or watching this. You'll find the link in the, the comments or the show notes to um, come and join the event. I'm going to be there. It, I wouldn't miss it. <laughs> it's no, going to no, be amazing. Gonna... It's going to be so amazing. Thank you so it's much. Historic moment. Yes, yes. And I, I kind of missed the, um, the 2012. I was kind of having my own little private awakening <laughs> that was kind of Bye. going on, but I, you know, didn't really kind of um, get it. That was kind of the, you know, my, my awakening moment was around that time, but yeah. I wasn't aware of it until you know, oh. the, a year or so later, just how much had shifted for me on that, on that, that date. Um, yeah. which is really amazing. So yeah, I'm not going to miss this. <laughs> I miss this one. Oh, no, don't miss it. Don't miss it. <laughs> Tell everybody. I will. Thank I you. will. I will. Thank you so much, Diana. Thank you everyone for listening or watching and we will see you in the next episode. Lots of love.